Good morning. Welcome to Harmony of the Gospels today. Today is lesson number 70. Okay, we are uh, back in uh, the Gospels this, this week here. And so we're going to be uh, working on uh, Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 through 48. And then we're going to bring in Luke again. We're going to be in Luke chapter 6, verse 27 through 38. And so this is what we're covering today. It's a good bit of text. And uh, the, the overall subject of the lesson today is the law of love, the law of love and how it applies. So, so let's say a quick word of prayer, and then we're going to uh, get started. Okay, all right. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace, Lord. We thank you for your blessings. Lord, please utilize this lesson for your will and, and your way, Lord, for the people that will hear it later on. Please bless them and strengthen them, Lord. And Lord, we just, Lord Jesus, we praise Thee and thank Thee for Your, Your grace and Your mercy and and the continual uh, uh, people getting saved under Your Word, Lord, and Lord, and the movement of Your Holy Spirit in their lives. And Lord Jesus, we praise Thee and thank Thee for all that You do. And Lord, we we ask You please to work through us this day and, and use my mouth, Lord. I'm I'm just an old farm boy and. I thank you for your grace, O oh God, in your name, Jesus. Amen. All right, so let's read real quick uh, Matthew 5, verses 43 through 48. Matthew 5, verses 43 through 48. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. But if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? If ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publican so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. All right? Okay, so what is love? What is love? Okay, this term love has been much distorted in our world today. People don't really know what love is. Okay, if I give you a dollar, do you love me? Okay. All right, you might want to hang around with me, but do you love me? Okay, if I give you a flower, do you love me? Okay, you might think, well, this is a pretty nice guy giving me a flower, you know. Um, if I give you a car, do you love me now? Okay, if I give you a car, I mean, you're like, man, this guy is great, man. He's like the best guy around. He just gave me a free car. But do you actually love me? Okay, all right. If I give you a house, do you love me? You're like, whoa, this guy gave me a house. That's amazing, you know. But do you love me? Okay. So I say that I love you, but do you love me? Okay. All right. So today love seems to say it is all about what you can get from someone with no need for a response. All right. That's what love seems to seem today, seems to say today. Is a response required for someone to love someone else? No, it's not. Okay. Not in any way, shape, or form. You can love someone. Um, love loves the unlovable, okay? Love loves the unlovable. The heart of Jesus' teaching is love here, okay? It's love, all right? We have all heard of the golden rule, okay? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, all right? Um, this is sometimes expressed in a negative form outside the Bible. Well, I'm gonna get back at that guy because he's gonna get back at me, you know? Um, so Jesus forbids treating others spitefully, all right, and commands that we love everyone, even our enemies. Okay, now this is harder to do than it is to be said, okay? All right, so Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to 44, you have heard it been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. So part of this verse comes from Leviticus 19, verses 16 through 18, okay? And there's a reason why here, all right? This is Leviticus 19, 16 through 18. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people, neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord, okay? He says, I, God says, he, I'm the Lord here, okay? All right, you're not supposed to do these things. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart, 
thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am Lord. And again, God says, I am Lord here, okay? This is what you're supposed to do, okay? This is what a people called by my name is supposed to do, okay? All right? In Matthew chapter verse 43, it says, and hate thine enemy, okay? Th this phrase here was not found in the Old Testament, okay? There was a distortion from the school of Shammai, okay, where they added to the command to love thy neighbor as thyself, and what they thought about this, to love thy neighbor as thyself, what they thought is implied to hate thine enemies as well, okay? So you, you love my neighbor as myself, but yeah, if that enemy over there, you got to hate him, okay? He's not your neighbor, okay? And that was the school of Shemaiah's thought, okay? So uh, Jesus here is addressing this very old distortion, all right, which developed into a lifelong hatred for another culture, okay? All right, so, which we can see today and all around the world, around us, you know, other cultures hate other cultures, all right? Verse 44, Jesus goes on to say, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, okay? All right, so hatred of one's enemies was an accepted part of Jewish ethics at this time. An absolutely accepted thing. All right, this teaching that stated by Jesus was very new, okay, very new to people. It took the love of your neighbor to the nth degree. He was like, he boosted this thing up to the nth degree, okay, the love of the neighbor. Since this wording was not found in the Old Testament anywhere, um, this all comes back to the subject of, of love is what it does, of love, all right? So what is love? Well, who created love? Who created love, all right? It, love is not a natural thing, all right? So who created love? So, so that should be a very easy one for all of us, okay, that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in God, our creator, all right? God created love. He loved us before we loved him because he sent his son to the cross, okay, for us while we were yet enemies. He created us with the capacity of basic love, okay? So if God created love, then true love would not argue with the truth, okay? Because God created it all. Neither will true love argue with the truth about love from the creator of love, okay? You won't argue with it at all. You believe it, okay? Because he's the creator of love which by the sending of God's only son to earth to die on a cross for our sins exemplified this love that we're talking about, okay? It's what we call agape love. You love someone even when they're unlovable, all right? So agape love. So any love that denies that God's word is not love is not true love, okay? It's not true love in any way, shape, or form. All right, so God's love goes beyond the boundaries of the knowledge of love, basic love, as what we know as human beings, all right? What this world needs is real agape love. That's what it really needs. God's love, not human emotions that have been described as love, all right? So, so pretty, pretty deep thoughts. In the first century, there were three words that were used by the Greeks to define the boundary of their knowledge of love, okay? You have storge, which is a Greek word for love that loves with a strong family feelings and relationships. Philia is a love that shares deep affection and commonality. And then eros is a love that's bound by sexual desire, okay? That's the three understandings. Now, what Jesus throws in is talking about here is a loving of people that hate you. It's a deeper type of love. It's what we call agape love, okay? It's the fourth type. It's a biblical love, a love that God has shown to this world through his acts toward us with his son, okay? God's love, agape love, for the world can be easily described in John 3, 16. Very simple. We all know this verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, his son, okay? 
you shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God's love, agape, is used to describe a husband's love for his wife when compared to the love of Christ for the church, okay? Where Paul says, Ephesians 5, verse 25, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, okay? All right, so God's love, agape, is used to describe his love for the sinner, okay? Romans 5, 8. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, all right? So the extent of God's love is shown here in the fact that Christ died for people in whom there was nothing to evoke or cause that love toward him, but he died for us anyway, all right? We are unbelievers without strength to save ourselves, without hope, ungodly in all our ways, sinners in all that we do, and natural born enemies of God, okay? So God committed his love toward us in that, while we were yet sinners, in this state, okay? Christ died for us, okay? Because God knew we had no hope, no hope, okay? None whatsoever. So Christ died for us. God loved us that much. Folks, this is what we call agape love, okay? The very heart and depth of Jesus' teaching is love here. It's about love, okay? So Luke 6, verse 27. Let's jump over to Luke real quick. Luke 6, verse 27. But I say unto you, which here, okay, do you even want to hear? Or are you even willing to hear what Jesus is getting ready to say here? What he's going to say, all right? I mean, are you are you want to hear? Or you're so mired down in the anger and hatred of this world that you're just not interested, okay? All right, so let, let's see what Jesus says. Which here, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. Love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, okay? You know, uh, Luke 6, 28, bless them that curse you. Man, it's amazing. And pray for them which despitefully use you, okay? Wow. Luke 6, verse 29, and unto him that smiteth thee on one cheek, Offer also the other, and him that taketh away that cloak, forbid not to take that coat also. I taught on that last week, okay? I mean, two weeks ago. In all cases here, we are to love and not have a retaliatory attitude. Now, how difficult is that? It's very difficult in the world today to not have a retaliatory attitude, okay? This can be quite difficult to love someone, a people that might want to harm or destroy you. The love of God sends out missionaries into environments like this all the time. Missionaries carry the love of God, the gospel into other countries that are enemies to us, um, where a real danger lurks at all times for their lives, okay? But they carry it out there anyway. Do good to them which hate you. How do you do good to someone who hates you, okay? It's very difficult, very difficult. Jesus did. He's our perfect example here. Uh, D.L. Moody, um, I heard an old story about D.L. Moody, had a grocery store owner that hated him. No matter what D.L. Moody did, he, he could not get on this guy's good side, okay? So whenever Moody had a visitor, he would always send them to this individual store, okay? One day, D.L. Moody sent a man to the grocery store, and the man commented about how the grocery store owner, so the man that came in to buy the stuff, commented about how the grocery store owner um, had had come to impress uh, Mr. Moody, okay? The grocery store owner was shocked to hear that, to hear this thing um, about how that Moody was impressed by him because he hated Moody so much. Yeah, he was shocked, all right? The grocery store owner asked the question, well, what did Moody say? Uh, D.L. Moody had been telling people that this grocery store owner was the best in Chicago and the owner was honest, very hardworking, and could always get a good deal at his store, all right? So from this event, this grocery store owner who knew Moody, um, um, that Moody could not reach, okay, in any way because the guy hated Moody, uh, eventually got saved because of this act, okay, this act of love, okay? Do good to them which hate you, okay? Do good to them. Maybe they will get saved and become your friend, all right? So think about it, all right? So let's say no matter what you do as a Christian does not seem to help a situation, what else can you do, okay? Well, guess what? You can pray, my friend, you can pray. Pray for them which despitefully use you. 
You pray for those you love. That's what you do. Pray for them, okay? Your prayer can go places you cannot, all right? So Paul stated in Philippians 1, verse 8 through 9, God is my reward. How greatly I long after you in the bowels of Jesus Christ. That's deep desire, okay? Bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more that you would have a deeper and deeper love for others that hate you. So abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, okay? The more you love other people, the more you see that that other person out there may be struggling and he might just be responding to you in his struggles where really the person deep inside is not like that. And if you love them, they might turn around and love you back, okay? This longing after fellow Christians here in the bowels of Jesus Christ is a deep yearning and intense compassionate love that was demanded by Jesus, okay, himself, and was now fostered in Paul by his union with Christ, okay? Okay, look at look at Paul. What are all the horrific things he did when he was Saul, okay? And now he's he's got this fostered love from Christ in him um, where he reaches out to others that hate him, okay? It's amazing, all right? So this is agape love. It can only happen by a union with Jesus Christ. That's it. It's not found in the human populace, okay? It only comes from a union with Jesus Christ. This is an affection, a deep yearning that reaches out to all impartially and without exception, okay? You reach out to others because you love. Paul went from hating and killing followers of Christ to a yearning deeply for their love and companionship. Isn't that beautiful? It's wonderful. It only comes from Jesus Christ. All right, this cannot happen of our own accord. There's no way we can do this in love of our own. <clears throat> this real love requires growth and maturity through Jesus Christ. After you are saved and your life has changed, when you encounter those who hate you, your ability to love is going to be tested, folks. It's going to be tested, all right? <clears throat> now, 1 Thessalonians 3.12 states this, and the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one towards another and towards all men, even as we do towards you, okay? That's what Paul is saying here, okay? 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 9 through 10. But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, okay? Because they were good there, okay? All right, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another, and indeed, Ye do it towards all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. We beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. They were to love the ones that hated them, all right? So as we are tested, our love matures. It grows, okay? All right? It grows for others, not just the brethren, but also for those who hate you. All right? So we are all broken people. And what if that one person who seems to dislike you just has a negative impression of you, and that's all they got, and you don't know it, all right? And, and maybe they have something going wrong in their lives which is affecting them, and they're acting, out, they're acting out against other people, all right? So when you love them and don't retaliate, they, they just might see the love of Christ and be saved. Think about this, folks. Think about this, all right? All right? So what if someone breaks into your house? Do you shoot him? Or do you witness to him? That's the question, all right? What do you do if he breaks into your house, all right? So it, I know an old minister who jumped on a man who broke into his home, and the minister's wife and kids piled on the attacker, and they held the guy down. As they were deciding what to do, the attacker begged to be let go. The minister said there would be only one way that he would ever let him go, okay? And, and the, the man listened to the plan of salvation and truly accepted Jesus as personal Savior, then he would let the guy go, all right? Well, the attacker actually got saved and accepted and agreed and went on to become a great minister himself. Now, I heard this recount at Hiles Anderson First Baptist Church, Chicago, and it amazed me, all right? I don't remember the actual people in it, but I just remember the recount. So this is what Jesus is telling us, okay? This is what he's telling us here, okay? So that... So, so why does the law of love stand in all situations? Why does it stand in all situations? Well, Jesus explains it um, again here. He explains it. Matthew chapter 5, 45. That ye may be children of your Father which is in heaven. Okay? So God is the author of love. Okay? And we see it every day. We see 
in every day here on the earth. We do every day. God's love, his providence, okay? He maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. God always, always loves and his providence continues as God made the promise of Noah after the flood. It continues season after season, all right? Okay, Jesus goes on again to explain this law of love and he says, you know, the Father's doing it. You need to do it, okay? Matthew 5, verse 46, for if you love them which love you, what reward have ye? okay? All right, do not even the publicans the same. They love within their own society and their own groups, okay? So Matthew 5, verse 47, if you salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Okay, because other brethren salute each other, all right? So do not even the publicans so, okay? So why do we think that we're different, okay? Why, why uh, we all live, you know, we all live in God's creation. We all belong to him. Okay, uh, so so why do we why do we think we do any different by loving within our own own groups and stuff? Okay, all right. So our natural instinct should be to love no matter what and to love those who hate us outside of our groups. All right. So Luke goes into further detail on the subject of the Father's love and our love. So Luke chapter six verse thirty states. Okay, Luke six verse thirty through thirty eight. So thirty. Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. So give them away and don't think they're going to come back. All right? And in verse 31, as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. You know, you know, if you really want people to love you, you need to love them first. All right? Okay? So verse 32, for if ye love them which love you, what thank have you? You know, you're loving people that already love you. You're not, you're not really loving outside your group, okay? For sinners also love those that love them, okay? So there you go. I mean, they love within their group, all right? So if ye do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? I mean, they're, it's like, oh, I'm doing good to you because you've already done good to me, all right? What thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same, okay? Verse 34, if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thank have ye? You know, why, why would you lend to someone you're going to get stuff back? Why don't you lend to the guy that you're not going to get anything back from him, all right? For, for sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again, uh, verse 35, but love ye your enemies and do good, lend hoping for nothing again. That's true love there, okay? And your reward shall be great in heaven. Think about that. And ye shall be children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil, okay? All right, so God is kind to everyone. On this earth. The sun is out there right now, okay? The sun is on the just and the unjust, okay? The rain falls on the just and the unjust. Some unjust people get a bump of crop because of the rain and sunshine. So does the just, okay? Think about it, all right? All right, what God does, okay? Be ye therefore merciful, that's verse 36, as your Father also is merciful. God knows everything down here and he loves us he gave his son to die for us even though we were enemies all right judge not and ye shall not be judged don't judge others condemn not and ye shall not be condemned forgive and ye shall be forgiven look at this okay folks okay verse 38 give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye met out withal, it shall be measured to you again. So that's the goodness of our soul. So what does this all say about the law of love here? Well, God is the author of love. He's our perfect example, okay? God's perfection should be our example and goal always, where we're loving all people, okay? We are always to discern right from wrong, but never to be hypocritical in the judging of others. Never, never, okay? God shows us love to all people without extinction, folks. Prayer is one of our practical ways to express love in very difficult situations. So Matthew chapter 5, verse 48 states, to shut this down now, be therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, 
is perfect. Absolutely. This is the example. This is a very high standard that Jesus establishes, which is extremely true. Okay? It's extremely true. And we may not be able to fully accomplish it in this life, but it's still God's standard for us. Okay? And the only way to really get at it is through Jesus Christ. Okay? One of the deep-seated sins of humanity today is selfishness. Selfishness. It's all this horrific selfishness. People look out for number one. What are we supposed to do as Christians? Lift others up. Love the unlovable. Love those that hate us. Thank you for listening today. Hope you have a great day. Bye.